So, Ginger, I hear you have a new apartment. Yes, it's great. I just moved in last week. Nice. Where is it? It's near Victory Monument. Do you know where that is? Yeah, I do.、Um, how do you get to work from there? Well, I take the Sky Train. Oh, I, that's really convenient. It is, it is. I, it's just a five minute walk. Okay. And what's the neighborhood like? It's a crowded neighborhood. There are a lot of people, lots of cars, just lots of energy in general. And is it conveniently located? It's very convenient. It's about a five minute walk to the Sky Train station. Okay. Why did you decide to move? Well, It's near a park, and I love living near a park. And it's also just a five minute walk to my gym. And have you made any new friends in that neighborhood? I have. I've met a couple of people in my apartment building, and I've gotten to know the person who owns a restaurant across the street. There's some great restaurants on the street, also. Oh, what kind of restaurants? Well, mostly Thai restaurants. A lot of Thai people live in the area. Um, but there's also a Western、uh, restaurant and a Japanese.、Okay. And is it a safe neighborhood? I feel very safe there.、Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that there's some thefts on some of the quiet streets where the motorbikes will ride by and snatch your bag off your shoulder. But I've never actually seen it myself, and I、okay. feel very safe sleeping there.、And、what、I've, about traffic? There is a lot of traffic. Oh, no. Yes, the traffic.、Um, and a lot of street traffic, too. Lots of people walking on the street. So it can be tough to get around. But there's still a lot of excitement in the area, so it's fun to be out and people watch. It doesn't sound like a quiet neighborhood. No, it's not quiet at all. Unless you go into the park, and then it's very quiet. How often do you go to the park? Almost every night. Every night after work, I'll take a walk in the park, and there's a pond with a water display with music. So、yeah. it can be very soothing. Actually, I remember that one time you had a party and you made that really nice pumpkin dip. Oh, yeah, that's a popular one. Everyone loves that when I make it. What do you need for it? It's really easy. All you need is one can of canned pumpkin,、um, one eight ounce block of cream cheese, powdered sugar, and a few spices. Is it easy to make? It is. You just let the cream cheese melt a little and then you blend it together with the pumpkin and the powdered sugar. And then after you get that really smooth and creamy, then you put in the nutmeg, ginger, and cinnamon. Wow, that sounds yummy. It is, it's great. And then I usually put a few cinnamon sticks in for appearance and then serve it with ginger snaps and with、um, green apples cut into slices. It's good with both of those. Cool, I'm going to try that sometime. What else can you make? Well, like I said, I'm not much of a cook, so I don't cook much, I put things together. I can, you know what? I have a blender and I do a lot of smoothies. I love making smoothies. Yeah, I buy the fruit and then keep the fruit in the freezer. That's the trick. You've got to freeze the fruit. And then you don't need ice so it doesn't taste watered down. So you take the frozen fruit, put it in the blender, and then you just mix it with yogurt or、um, fruit juice and it's delicious. What kind of fruit do you like to use? Well, my favorite is just really simple. It's just frozen strawberries, frozen banana, orange juice, and a little honey if you want, but you don't even need the honey. And then I have another I like with mango and papaya and pineapple and yogurt. 
Well, between your smoothie and pumpkin dip and my eggplant curry, we can have throw quite a party. Let's do it. We'll do it on your rooftop with your cats. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> In Australia, there's lots of snakes as well. Is there snakes in Guam? Oh, uh, yeah. There's plenty of snakes in Guam, um, one of which is very famous is the brown tree snake. Now, the brown tree snake was brought over to Guam a long time ago in cargo ships uh, when it hid in the cargo, and the cargo was unloaded onto uh, the docks of Guam. So when these brown tree snakes uh, were accidentally released onto Guam soil, they subsequently destroyed most of Guam's bird population. Can you believe that? Oh, that's amazing. So, yeah, introductions like that can cause disasters yeah, for wildlife. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And because these brown tree snakes destroyed most of the bird life on Guam, um, we've lost a lot of beautiful tropical birds that used to live on Guam. Um, another thing that I can think of that was introduced to Guam but isn't a wild animal is a wild plant. And we call it a Japanese bonsai leaf, actually. Um, and I believe bonsai means uh, suicide or something in Japanese. But what these leaves do is that they grow and grow, and they look like vines. So they cover loads and loads of trees and good wildlife that are out there. Um, I mean, plant life. Um, and they keep these plant life from growing because they essentially ambush them and keep sunlight from ever reaching them. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. So if you can imagine a building covered completely in really thick vine, that's how these, uh, these uh, Japanese bonsai leaves work. They completely shroud and cover all of the good um, plant life that we have on Guam. So we've lost a lot of good plant life, beautiful um different types of uh, leaves and bushes and flowers. flowers. Mm. Yeah. So in addition to losing all of our bird life, we've also lost <laughs> a lot of this uh, uh, plant life to this introduction of a foreign plant species to Guam. Shirley, one question, please. I'm a bit confused now. One thing, when, when about sports, sometimes I can see UK play something with the team. Sometimes you're all divided. Why is that? So we are essentially still four countries, four separate countries in a United Kingdom. So, um, yeah, basically each country just wanted to keep their national team. In the case of the Olympics, for some reason, and I'm not sure of the exact reason, but the Olympics committee uh, didn't want um, four divided teams from Great Britain. They wanted a representative of the United Kingdom. So they, they basically made the rule that Great Britain had to send a team and not uh, teams from the four individual countries. Um, so yeah, so we are a United Kingdom, but we're still very much four independent countries. Uh, and each country is very proud of their, their own national teams for football and for rugby and things like that. And um, yeah, but uh, it's good that we get together for, for the Olympics and, and we can perform as uh, one united country. 
Okay, thank you very much. So what about you? You're still in the same place, right? Yeah, I'm still there. Good. How's it going? Oh, it's it's great. Um, I'm actually quite satisfied with it now. Oh, good, because I thought you wanted to move at one point. Yeah, I thought about it for a while, but then I decided to stay there. There's a lot of there's a lot of good points there. Um, it's a quiet neighborhood. It's not too far from the train, so I can get to work easily. For a while, I thought it might be a little too expensive, just slightly above my budget, but um, I've gotten used to it, and my cats love it. They're really comfortable there, so I think I'm going to stay. Oh, great. I love your cats. Do they have a lot of room to roam around? They have enough room. Of course, they, they were better off in the house. Right. I was living there last year. But they've adapted pretty well. So there's a roof there. I can take them up and they run around. There's plenty of places for them to hide. Now, what about your neighbors? Are you still living near um, Matt, Matt and, Laura? and Laura? Yeah. Right, right. Actually, it's really funny. Um, they've, they've been there for about four months. And last weekend, they invited some people over but five or six of their colleagues and they had a little party they played poker and had lots of booze around but unfortunately the land the neighbors complained to the landlord and the landlords were just really angry oh no so they sent them this really harsh email and they said that they wanted them out by the end of the week <gasps> So, yeah, Matt and Laura have been kicked out of the building. You are kidding. No. <laughs> wow, and just five people over. Yeah, it was like five or six people, and but apparently it was loud enough. I think it's because the neighborhood is kind of family-oriented, so um, people aren't used to loud parties. Oh, right. Maybe the voices carry a lot. In yeah, the there's a lot of echo in the building, actually, for some mm -hmm. reason. So. Well, that's too bad for them. Where did they move? They just moved down the street to another apartment building. It's smaller, so I don't think they're happy about it, but oh well. Well, tell them I said hey when you see them. I will, yeah. Are you happy about it? Oh, now, like um, looking back, are you glad she did? It was that? it was tough love. <laughs> at the time, I hated her, and I was getting picked on a lot at school about it because mm. I just didn't realize that you know, as a female, you you have to do these certain things. It's like this is what's acceptable in the community. You have to do this. So it's like I didn't realize it because I always played with the boys, mm. and none of them did this crap. <laughs> It's like, why do we have to worry about that? It sounds so, really kind of old-fashioned, doesn't it? Yeah, um, but I was actually, you know, now thinking about it, I'm happy that she did because, you know, it, it it brought it home to me that, that to a certain degree you do have to at least, you know, live with what your community, you know, accepts as standards. Like, if you walk outside, you know, the community accepts that you have to, you know, wear a shirt when you go outside. You can't go out topless. Mm. You probably should wear the shirt <laughs> or you'll get looked at funny. So if I don't want my daughter to wear makeup, I should actually buy her some makeup and force her to wear it. <laughs> so, so she'll do the exact opposite. Well, I, I have heard that uh, children do tend to do exactly what their parents tell them not to do. Um, I, I just, I don't know. Um, I didn't want to wear makeup, so my mom was concerned. Um, 
I know a lot of people, though, who have had the opposite problem, like when they're younger, like they're maybe seven or or eight, and they want to wear makeup because mommy does.、Mm. And you know, I I had a lot of friends who would play dress up. They would sneak into mom's closet, steal all the you know her dresses and her high heels, and steal all her makeup and you know play dress up.、Mm. It at a certain age, it was cute. But、um, my cousin actually、uh, was one of them, and she would wear makeup. She was to school.、Um, she was only an elementary schooler. Wow, so, that's、uh, pretty young. Yeah, there was a lot of、uh, a lot of、uh, anger about that from the teachers, and、uh, it was not at all acceptable. <laughs> so I don't really know when the correct age is to wear makeup, but.、Um, I think、uh, at least if they're uh, uh, more mature or more adult-like,、uh, I guess maybe it's all right. Once they become, they're no longer little girls anymore. Then maybe they can let them wear makeup if they want.、Mm. But well,、yeah. cheers! Thank, thanks for the advice, <laughs> and I'll use it wisely. <laughs> You're welcome. So Nabil, I really like that eggplant curry you made the other night. What's in that? Oh, you did. Okay,、um, it's actually really easy. There's、um, there's eggplant, and you need some potatoes, some tomatoes, and onions, and a few spices. Okay, what spices? Well,、um, I use about half a teaspoon of Turmeric powder and a teaspoon of coriander powder, red chili, and cumin. Are those easy to find at any grocery store? You can find them at most grocery stores nowadays.、Um, if you can't find them at the major ones, then you might want to look for an international food store, and all of those carry the Indian spices. Okay. I have a really small kitchen. What kind of equipment do you need to make it? Oh, nothing at all. You just need a stove and you need a saucepan. Okay,、yeah. I can handle、yeah. that. So, how do I make it? Well, first of all, you heat some oil in the saucepan. When the oil is hot enough, then you add the chopped onions and a tablespoon of garlic paste. And a tablespoon of ginger paste. Okay. And you let those cook for a few minutes until the onions have turned brown.、And、then after that, you add the tomatoes, and let those cook for a bit until the tomatoes have gone soft. And then you add all the spices: the turmeric, the red chili, the coriander, the cumin, and the salt, of course. And just mix it up well at that point, and add some water. Okay. The water prevents the spices from burning. After that, add the potatoes, and then add the eggplant, and then pour in about a, a glass of water. Just to make sure that the the potatoes and the eggplant are covered, and then you turn it to low heat. And put the lid on and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Okay, I'm not much of a cook, but I think I can do that. I'll give it a try. Well, good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe I'll have you over and let you try it. Yeah, I'd love that. All right.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so Rebecca,、um, mm -hmm. we just talked about kids and、um, uh, kids and technology. I、uh, and and you asked me about、um, whether or not I should give a cell phone to my son. Yeah.、Um, now I would like you to give me a little bit of advice、mm -hmm. for my daughter.、Um, <laughs> I have a daughter, and she's only seven months old. But I, 
<laughs> I am um, I'm worried about when she's older, um, when she gets a boyfriend, and and when she has her first date, <laughs> and when she will start wearing makeup. So, um, could you could you kind of give me some advice about this? Oh well, I think maybe I had a bit of an unusual experience. Um, my mom actually made me wear makeup. Really? When I uh, got into high school, it was like, you know, I, in middle school, I was the kid with, you know, braces and glasses and stuck in a book. And my mom was like, you can't do that in high school. You'll never meet anyone. Wow. So she took away my glasses and made me get contacts. And uh, I couldn't do anything about the braces, but, you know, as long as you cover your mouth or do something uh -huh. weird when you smile. Yeah. Wow, that sounds quite the opposite to, <laughs> to many of my friends. Like, they, they all wanted to wear makeup and no. uh, their parents wouldn't let them. No, I was a tomboy. My mom was actually kind of worried. Like, she was like, do you have any interest at all in girly things? I was like, no, I don't like shoes. I don't like clothes. I don't need a purse. <laughs> I'll just go climb a tree. So, so do you think it's important as a parent to steer your children, uh, like mm. to, to kind of sculpt them and uh, make them into more rounded people, or do you think you should just let them go? Um, at the time, I think I actually resented my mom for it. Because, like, she would, she waxed my eyebrows. Really? Wow. <laughs> my mom uh, removed my eyebrows. She she peeled. She sat me down. And was like, "You have a unibrow. That is not acceptable." And she pinned me down and ripped them out. And I screamed and I hated her for weeks. Oh wow! How old were you um, when she did that? Oh god, it was the end of middle school sometime. But <laughs> middle school, high school, somewhere in that area. So like fifty. 15? 15-ish, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't shave either. My mom my mom actually shaved my legs the first time. She's like, you need to shave this now. <laughs> I was like... So, Julia, now you are a parent. That's right. And uh, have you heard of all these terms that we have in the U.S. for different types of parents? I wonder if you have them in the U.K. You mean like soccer mom, stuff like that? Exactly. That's the only one I've heard of, actually. Okay. So what, what do you think a soccer mom is? What have you heard? My, my image is a mother who dedicates her time to running her kids' to and from soccer practice, is that right? And also right. drives a big vehicle. My image is like a big SUV or a big four-wheel drive. Right. I think it's also, it's like a parent that has many scheduled events for their child. Oh, okay. So like and maybe they have swim them. class, soccer practice, ballet, stuff like that. Oh, maybe I'm a little bit of a soccer mom. Yeah, I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's actually, it's a good term. Like it's, I think a soccer mom usually is consi considered a, a caring parent. Okay. And they try to have their child do like productive things. Must be pretty, things. quite an affluent, perhaps middle class kind of parent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now we have the equivalent, and it's called a NASCAR dad. <laughs> is NASCAR some kind of car racing? Yeah, basically it's just the, these cars... They run around and ride around in a circle. It's kind of like horse racing for cars. They just uh -huh. go round and round. Um, but yeah, so I guess it's the same thing. It's just a dad who's really, you know, really into his kids. Spends it, a lot of time with his kids. Would this be a stay-at-home dad, like a? No, no. It's just kind of like a good old boy father, like a dad who's kind of blue collar, um, not rich. You know, maybe maybe lower. Lower middle class, maybe, but just kind of like your typical sitcom, TV sitcom dad, I guess. But that's nice. Takes his kids everywhere. That's nice. Yeah, Get yeah. Involved in the... Yeah, like a NASCAR dad would probably take his sons hunting and maybe take his daughter shopping and stuff like that. So, Julia, uh, let's talk about types of people. Okay. All right, first one, 
Are you a fitness freak? A fitness freak? Huh. I'm fairly fit, but I'm not a freak. No, I'm not a fitness freak, no. No, so you exercise, but it's not like you do it all the time. No, and I do some unhealthy stuff as well. I like to drink, and I'm a former smoker, and yeah, no, I'm not a fitness freak. (laughs) Right, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, fitness freak is like somebody who does it, who exercises compulsively. I indulge in bad stuff too, so no, I'm not a fitness freak. Okay, so that leads us to the next question. Mm -hmm. Are you a party animal? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> I'm but, too old now. <laughs> but when you were younger, you were a party I think, animal. Uh, yeah, I'd say that was probably the type that I most uh, most fit, fitted into. Oh, nice. I was never a party animal. No. No, I've always been pretty, pretty, uh, but, but tame. I've always been pretty tame. Yeah, I was pretty wild. When really? When I was younger, yeah, yeah. So you used to drink, smoke, stay yeah, up late? Yeah, 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 all that and more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come home in the wee hours of the morning? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. That's cool. Okay, uh, next one would be, um, do you know anybody in your family who's a couch potato? Couch potato... Because I know that you're not a couch potato. I'm not a couch potato, no. I, my brother sometimes demonstrates couch potato traits. Yeah. He likes to play video games and stuff like that, and he'll spend a lot of time watching movies, and so he does spend a lot of time sedentary compared to me. He makes me look like a fitness freak, I guess, because he doesn't <laughs> do so much exercise. Right. And so for people listening, the couch potato is somebody who watches a lot of TV and sits on the couch. Spends a lot. a lot of time on the couch, yeah. Um, well, how about the similar personality trait of the bookworm? Are you a bookworm? A bookworm? No, but I think my husband's probably a bookworm. Yeah. So he Spends just, a lot of time reading books. He reads very fast, so he gets through a lot ooh, of books. He's a speed reader. Yeah, he's just a very fast reader, and he has to read all... He has to have a book with him all the time. He cannot... A waiting room or on a train or any situation where you've just got to sit around, he cannot do it if he doesn't have a book. Yeah, you know, I live alone, and that's that's a terrible trait that I have. I cannot sit and eat and just eat without something occupying my attention. I have to read... Or I have to be like watching something on the computer. And if I go to a waiting room or anything like that, or I'm on a plane, I'm the same. I have to have something to read. It drives me nuts. See, I can't read on transport because I get sick. It makes uh, me sick. It makes me nauseous. I get seasick. Sickness. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have a habit of reading on a tra- a bus or a car. Oh, my God, no, I can't read. <laughs> no way. But my husband reads everywhere all the time. Oh, that's cool. So, Meg, I hear that you're quite the baker. You like mm. to bake brownies, cookies, things like that? Yeah, I love to bake. It's pretty relaxing for me and kind of fun, uh, kind of a creative outlet, baking. Well, everybody notices it in the office when we see you bring in brownies for your students, and we're all jealous. We wish we were in your class. So, what, what's what's it with baking? Like, is it just something you do to mm. relax? Um, yeah, well, personally, I love sweets. Like, I would eat only sweets if my body could handle it, but I try to eat regular food, too, so I think I inherited that from my mom. But So because I love sweets so much, it ends up being really fun making something uh, like brownies or cookies. Um, And for the creative outlet aspect, um, I love to make cupcakes or cakes, and I don't know if you've heard of cake pops. No, what's it? What's a cake pop? A cake pop is like a little piece of cake on a stick coated in chocolate. Oh, really? That yeah. sounds pretty good. So in America right now, they're getting pretty popular. There's, some people are saying it's the new cupcake. So I don't know if you know, a few years back, cupcakes got pretty popular. And so now we have cake pops. Um, and I was in the process of starting a little cake pop business before I moved to Japan. So um, it's really fun because you can... 
make the cake pops and it takes a while, but then you can decorate them in all these really creative ways for different holidays or parties or birthday or just cute things. So, um, yeah, so the creativity plus something sweet makes it fun for me. That's awesome. But what cake pop, is it like a corn dog, but like a cake? <laughs> no, it's just like a little round piece of cake. So the process is you should bake a cake like normal yeah. and then sift it up. So it's just tiny little crumbs. So ruin the cake that you've made, sift it up till it's just crumbs and then mix in just a little bit of like cream cheese frosting. Uh-huh. And it makes kind of a dough, a formable, moldable dough. Uh-huh. And then uh, you mold balls, put it on a stick, dip it in chocolate, and then you can decorate it. So it, it can be chocolate or like a vanilla a colored type. You know, you can have different colors. Things wow. Like that, so. Cake pops. Yeah. Yeah. So cake pops are probably my favorite thing to make, but also decorating cakes. I took a couple of cake decorating classes um, and making frosting and you know using the special frosting tools to swirl it on yeah. cupcakes or whatever so um so yeah. have you ever made uh, uh like a wedding cake or anything like that mm, i did actually make one wedding cake i never really wanted to make wedding cakes because they're very complicated and there's so much pressure for it to be extremely perfect because it's someone's wedding yeah. and so but there was uh, a couple that i knew who were just doing a really like low budget cute wedding and they weren't too concerned about it being a huge cake they just needed something smaller and so i did a couple of tiers and it was actually a chocolate cake so it wasn't even white but so i did one chocolate cake but i've done cake pops for a few weddings as like favors for the guests wow the cake pops are just the Mm. thing yeah cake because they come out so cute i actually have a cake pop set that i can make where it looks like a little bride and a little groom (laughs) like a little tuxedo and so those are probably my most popular ones for weddings um and i also before cake pops i was making truffles so that's another thing that you can also decorate in a cute way Wow. Well, we'll actually, we'll talk about that more in the next interview. I'd like Mm. to ask you some questions about truffles. Sure.